The purpose of this learning module is to provide an overview of dams in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, including types of dams, dam uses, and potential risk factors. States have the primary responsibility for protecting their populations from dam failure. Of the approximately 79,500 dams in the United States, state governments regulate about 95%. This learning module will also provide information regarding the federal and state partnering efforts to leverage resources and funding through FEMA, the United States Army Corps of Engineers, and professional organizations. A dam is a structure that impounds water in a given area. A dam is defined by Kentucky Revised Statute 151 as any structure that is 25 feet in height measured from the downstream toe to the crest of the dam or has a maximum impounding capacity of 50 acre feet or more at the top of the structure. Dams have long been a part of civilization. The first known dam is located in Jordan and dates back to 3000 BC. Dams range in size, construction elements, and uses. There are several types of dams. Gravity dams, arch gravity dams, barrages, and embankment dams. Embankment dams include rock fill dams, concrete fact rock fill dams, earth fill dams, and asphalt concrete core dams. This slide shows the location for dams in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. As opposed to a dam, a levee is built parallel to a waterway, most often a river, in order to protect lives and properties behind it from some level of flooding. A dam built for flood risk reduction is usually designed to lower the amount of water going downstream of the dam during a flood by containing excess water and releasing it slowly over time. Unlike most levees, dams may serve purposes other than flood control, such as providing water for irrigation, community water supplies, recreation, and hydroelectric power. The image on the right of the slide is a levee in New Albany, Indiana along the Ohio River. The levee runs parallel to the Ohio River and protects the city of New Albany from Ohio River flooding. The levee and flood wall system in southern Indiana was built in the 1940s and 50s with the goal to protect southern Indiana from a flood similar to the 1937 Ohio River flood. The image on the left of the slide is an example of a Kentucky dam. Willisburg Lake Dam is in Willisburg, Kentucky. Willisburg Lake provides drinking water to residents in Springfield and Washington County. Willisburg Lake is also a recreational fishing source. The image on this slide is a flood wall in Williamson, West Virginia. The purpose of this flood wall is to protect the city from rising waters from the Tug Fork River. A flood wall, like a levee, runs parallel to the flooding source. The graphic on this slide represents the estimated uses for dams in the United States as of 2005. Dams provide prime recreational facilities throughout the United States. Boating, skiing, camping, picnic areas, and boat launch facilities are all supported by dams. In addition to helping farmers, dams help prevent the loss of life and property caused by flooding. Flood control dams impound floodwaters and then either release them under control to the river below the dam or store and divert the water for other uses. For centuries, people have built dams to help control devastating floods. Dams create reservoirs throughout the United States that supply water for many uses, including industrial, municipal, and agricultural uses. 10% of American cropland is irrigated using water stored behind dams. Thousands of jobs are tied to producing crops grown with irrigated water. There are more than 1,300 mine tailings impoundments in the United States that allow the mining and processing of coal and other vital minerals while protecting the environment. The United States is one of the largest producers of hydropower in the world, second only to Canada. Dams produce over 100,800 megawatts of renewable electricity and meet 8-12% to 12 of the nation's power needs. Hydropower is considered clean because it does not contribute to global warming, air pollution, acid rain, or ozone depletion. In some instances, dams provide enhanced environmental protection such as the retention of hazardous materials and detrimental sedimentation. Dams and locks provide for a stable system of inland river transportation throughout the heartland of the U.S. The image on this slide is an example of a map that illustrates the sunny day inundation zone in red. The sunny day inundation zone is the estimated area that would flood if there was a dam breach on a sunny day, under normal conditions. The sunny day area is estimated through modeling and engineering analysis. In recent years, dam safety engineers are working to mitigate risks for residents in these areas, including property acquisitions and identifying appropriate uses for the land in the sunny day inundation zone. Dams are divided into three hazard classes. High hazard dams are located such that the failure may cause loss of life or serious damage to houses, industrial, or commercial buildings, important public utilities, main highways, or major railroads. Moderate hazard structures are located such that failure may cause significant damage to property and project operation, but loss of human life is not envisioned. 
Low hazard structures are located such that failure would cause loss of the structure itself, but little or no additional damage to other property. The hazard classification does not indicate the condition of the dam, rather the classification indicates the potential impact that a dam failure could have to downstream sites. In the event of a dam failure, the potential risks include loss of life, loss of structure, and personal property, and the emotional stress that results from personal loss. Residents whose home are in the inundation zone may be at risk. There are several types of dam failure, including overtopping, structural failures, settlement and cracking, piping and internal erosion, and failure to properly maintain the dam. Dam failures can be extreme. This slide summarizes some of the worst accounts. The worst dam failure in the United States was the Johnstown, Pennsylvania flood. At 4.07 p.m. on the afternoon of May 31, 1889, after a night of heavy rains, the South Fork Dam had failed, sending tons of water crashing down the narrow valley. Those caught by the wave found themselves swept up in a torrent of oily, muddy water surrounded by tons of grinding debris. Although it was over in 10 minutes, for some the worst was yet to come. Darkness fell. Thousands were huddled in attics, others were floating on the debris, while many more had been swept downstream to the old stone bridge at the junction of the rivers. Piled up against the arches, much of the debris caught fire, entrapping forever 80 people who had survived the initial flood wave. A series of dam failures in the 1970s caused the nation to focus on inspecting and regulating dams. On February 26, 1972, a tailings dam owned by the Buffalo Mining Company in Buffalo Creek, West Virginia failed. In a matter of minutes, 125 people were killed, 1,100 people were injured, and over 3,000 were left homeless. On June 5, 1976, Teton Dam, a 123 meter high dam on the Teton River in Idaho, failed causing $1 billion in damage and leaving 11 dead. Over 4,000 homes and over 4,000 farm buildings were destroyed as a result of the Teton Dam failure. In November 1977, Kelly Barnes Dam in Georgia failed, killing 39 people, most of them college students. The Tom Sock Dam failure occurred in 2005 in Missouri. On the morning of December 14th, Sometime after 5 a.m., the Tom Sock Upper Reservoir failed, allowing nearly 1.5 billion gallons of water to careen down a small creek on the northwest side of Prophet Mountain toward the Black River Valley and Johnson Shut-In State Park. The destruction at the site was incredible. All of the trees in the path of the flowing water were stripped off the Earth's surface. What remained were large rocks and exposed bedrock surfaces. The flowing water removed soil from the valley floor and created large scour holes. While the Johnson's Shut-Ins Park State Park received the most damage, private property located northwest of the park became a debris field for trees and the park superintendent's home was destroyed by the flowing water. The following slides show the Teton Dam failure in Idaho over the course of the dam failure. This is an example of a piping failure. These images were taken by Mrs. Eunice Olson. The photo to the left shows a view northwest toward the right abutment of probably between 10.30 and 11 a.m. The leak is the dark brown streak on the dam face near the gray bedrock in the left half of the photo. The speck above the leak near the top of the dam is a D9 bulldozer heading down to the leak to push dirt into it futilely. The photo to the right shows the leak as a muddy brown streak on the dam face near the gray bedrock. Note the position of the leak relative to the abutment rock for comparison in subsequent pictures. On this slide, the photo to the left shows muddy water issuing out of the hole about two-thirds up the face of the dam and begins to pond at the toe. The photo to the right shows the hole in the dam face enlarging upward. The left photo on this slide shows the hole in the dam face enlarging upward, erosion has cut into the bedrock of the abutment, and another brown collapse hole forms above the main link. Muddy brown water begins to flood works at the toe of the dam. In the photo to the right, the leak hole has enlarged greatly and erosion of the bedrock intensifies. The photo to the left on this slide shows the hole in the dam face continuing to enlarge upward near the crest of the dam. The rush of water increases markedly and erosion cuts deep into bedrock of the abutment. The photo to the right shows the hole in the dam face beginning to cut across the crest of the dam and the rush of water increases even more. The works of the toe are flooded. In the photo to the left of this slide, the dam is breached at 11.57 a.m. The rush of muddy brown water is violent. Notice how the breach widens in subsequent photos. The photo to the right shows water spilling unchecked through the breach. In the photo to the left, the breach widens, and in the photo to the right, the flow of water increases. In this photo, the photographer has moved further away. The flow is completely unchecked. All works of the toe of the dam are completely flooded. 
The breach in the dam continues to widen and the rush of water increases. The canyon floor is flooded from bank to bank and all works there are completely inundated. This final photo shows flood waters advancing through Rexburg. The photo was provided by Mrs. Olson, but not taken by her. This view from the north-northwest of the Teton Dam site, near the position where Mrs. Olson took her photos, was taken in August of 2001. All that remains of the original dam is the pyramid-shaped hill. The failure occurred on the left or northwest side of the hill. The cut on the right side was made by engineers to study the internal character of the rock material that made up the dam. A PowerPoint presentation from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers documents a gate failure at the Markland Navigation Lock in Warsaw, Kentucky. The Markland Lock gate was damaged and a repair plan was implemented. Wolf Creek Dam is on the Cumberland River in South Central Kentucky. It provides hydropower, flood control, water supply, and water quality benefits for the Cumberland River system and surrounding region. Lake Cumberland Dam, along with Dale Hollow Dam, Center Hill Dam, and J. Percy Priest Dam, provide an adequate supply of water to enhance navigation on the main stem of the Cumberland River from Salina, Tennessee to the Ohio River. The lake is a source of recreation that has attracted more visitors than Yellowstone National Park, 4.89 million compared to 2.87 million. Designed and constructed during the period 1938 to 1952, the 5,736-foot-long dam is a combination rolled earth fill and concrete gravity structure. In 1968, muddy flows and two sinkholes signaled serious reservoir seepage problems. Investigations indicated the problems were due to the karst geology of the site, characterized by an extensive interconnected network of solution channels in the limestone foundation. Piping of filling materials in these features and collapse of overburden and embankment into the voids caused the problems. The district immediately began an emergency investigation and grouting program between 1968 and 1970 that is credited with saving the dam. The district chose to construct a concrete diaphragm wall through the earth embankment into the rock foundation to block the seepage. This wall was constructed between 1975 and 1979. For years, the United States Army Corps of Engineers monitored Wolf Creek Dam at Lake Cumberland's Wolf Creek Dam. Water was leaking from water seepage around the limestone foundation. In order to mitigate the problem, the United States Army Corps of Engineers, or USACE, planned a mile-long concrete barrier within the existing earthworks with an anticipated completion date of 2014. Until the leak is mitigated, USACE officials are reducing water pressure on the dam by keeping the lake at or below normal pool levels. Since completion of the wall in 1979, district personnel have continued to closely monitor the project. Key instrumentation readings, persistent and increasing wet areas, and investigative borings that encountered soft, wet material at depth in the embankment confirm solution features still exist that have not been cut off. While the original wall interrupted the progression of erosion, seepage has since found new paths under the wall and around the wall, and perhaps through defects in the wall itself. The most recent project update provides that the barrier wall is expected to be complete in December 2013. The dam safety engineers in Kentucky and nationwide are working to mitigate risks associated with dams. Some of the tools that dam safety engineers use to reduce risk include inspections, maintenance, repairs, property acquisition, emergency action plans, limited land uses downstream, and or easements. High and moderate hazard dams are inspected every two years by the Kentucky Division of Water. Low hazard dams are inspected every five years. If the structure meets all the necessary requirements as outlined in Engineering Memorandum No. 5, a certificate of inspection is issued to the owner. Otherwise, the owner is notified of any deficiencies. Depending upon the type of dam, periodic inspections are formed during the construction of a new dam. A final inspection is performed when the construction is complete and as-built drawings are submitted. If the dam is constructed according to the plan's specifications, a letter is issued approving the impounding of water. The dam is then added to the Kentucky Division of Water Inventory Database. Kentucky Division of Water staff with the Dam Safety Section and Floodplain Compliance Section periodically inspect all dams on the inventory as long as they continue to operate, which is approximately 300 dams each year. Each inspection starts with a complete file review in the office to note any identified deficiencies and to become familiar with hydrologic evaluations. The inspector then performs the field evaluation. In the field, the inspector conducts a complete visual inspection. Surveys are completed for dams with missing measurements. Photographs help provide a permanent record of observations. 
Following the inspection, a letter and report are provided to the owner listing the observations and, if needed, deficiencies and remedial measures required. Enforcement action is sometimes required to ensure proper dam maintenance or modification. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineer, or USACE, dam inspections are to ensure the dam system will perform as expected, identify deficiencies, continuously assess the integrity of the dam, collect information in order to make informed decisions about future actions, determine if the dam is being properly operated and maintained, and to determine if the local sponsor is in compliance with the project partnership agreement, if applicable. An individual interested in constructing in or along a stream in Kentucky should consult the information available through the Kentucky Division of Water website. An Emergency Action Plan, or EAP, is a formal document that identifies potential emergency conditions at a dam and specifies pre-planned actions to be followed to minimize property damage and loss of life. The EAP specifies actions the dam owner should take to moderate or alleviate the problems at the dam. It contains procedures and information to assist the dam owner in issuing early warning and notification messages to responsible downstream emergency management authorities of the emergency situation. It also contains inundation maps to show the emergency management authorities of the critical areas for action in case of an emergency. There are six basic elements to an emergency action plan. There's a notification flowchart, emergency detection, evaluation, and classification, responsibilities, preparedness, inundation maps, and appendices. All of the elements should be included in a complete EAP. The dam owner is responsible for the development of the emergency action plan. However, the development or revision of an EAP must be done in coordination with those having emergency management responsibilities at the state and local levels. Emergency management agencies will use the information in the dam owner's emergency action plan to facilitate the implementation of their responsibilities. State and local emergency management authorities will generally have some type of plan in place, either a local emergency operations plan or a warning and evacuation plan. As the state's infrastructure ages, a quantifiable plan is necessary to communicate the risks due to dam failure and identify mitigation opportunities and alternatives. Dam failure has been identified as one of the major natural hazards in the state hazard mitigation plan. The major tenets of this dam safety mitigation plan will better serve dam owners, citizens, local governments, and emergency response personnel by enhancing the risk assessment and mitigation strategies outlined in the state hazard mitigation plan and communicating them to a wide audience throughout the Commonwealth. By creating a more holistic and specific view of dam-related risks, this plan provides an opportunity to enhance the applicability and implementation of the State Hazard Mitigation Plan and Regional Mitigation Plans. Dams have many beneficial uses throughout the Commonwealth, including flood control, water supply, and recreation. However, dams may pose a significant hazard when risks are introduced through development downstream or as their components age. The plan provides an opportunity to better understand the risks that dams pose and to identify cost-effective options to reduce risk. This plan integrates accepted methodologies from the scientific and emergency response and management community to gain a better understanding of the social and economic factors regarding dam failures. The methodologies provide a means for the Kentucky Division of Water to modernize its dam safety program in order to enhance sustainability and resilience for communities throughout the Commonwealth. The Kentucky Division of Water has created applicable products that are dynamic and easily understood that encourage dam owners and affected communities to be part of the solution to reducing risk. The map on this slide illustrates an ongoing project by the Kentucky Division of Water to assess the citizens, homes, structure, and infrastructure that is at risk in the case of a dam breach. KDAO is developing products to improve planning and education and outreach efforts. The map provides arrival times, inundation area, people, structures, and infrastructure at risk. There are many dam safety resources. These include the National Inventory of Dams, which is a computerized database of U.S. dams used to track information on our water control infrastructure, land use management, floodplain management, risk management, and emergency action planning. The Dam Safety Program Management Tools are an information collection and management system used by federal and state dam safety program managers to provide as requested and periodic information on local dam safety information, program needs, and accomplishments within each organization's jurisdiction. National Performance of Dams Program is a national effort headquartered at Stanford University to retrieve, archive, and disseminate information on dams and their performance in the U.S. Additional information can be found at the websites on the slides above. This concludes our module on dam safety.